Hello, my friends. Happy Monday. I'm Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes, and we are sewing through my tea party quilt. And if you can't tell from my voice, I am sick. <laughs> um, so hopefully sound is working today. We had some problems last week in our kickoff sew along, but it appears that everything's good. So I wanna see who's here. I'm so excited that you guys are here and that we're gonna start sewing up this really fun quilt that's behind me together. Oh, let's see, Becky said, it is beautiful and warmer today and it's going to start raining soon. Okay, um, yeah, apparently that's what it's going to do here too. It was snowy all week last week and now um, all the rain is coming, so bye-bye snow which is good because um, hopefully um, we'll get some decent roads again. I was in road to California last week. I was able to go. <laughs> Maybe I should have stayed home. I brought this lovely, in addition to all the purchased purchases I made, I brought home a lovely cold. So <laughs> I'm gonna try my best not to like gross you guys out, but I did not want to miss our video because this is like, the, you know, we're kicking it off and I just, didn't want to miss. So if I put you on hold so I can sneeze or something crazy, you know that's why. Um, fortunately, it's not too bad. It's just, you know, head cold. So it is what it is. It's fine. But I'm excited to be here with you guys today. We are going to sew up this teapot block. Isn't it so cute? And it looks really big. This is Lori Holt's uh, 14 by 14 design board and it takes up there is a design board behind there. <laughs> Takes up the whole design board. Um, but that's one of the best things about a large picture block is you have to cut all these specific pieces. We're gonna talk about tips about cutting and uh, piecing and things like that to make sure that your teapot turns out as good as it can. Um, and the other thing is, is it's so big that it really goes together pretty quickly. So I, I don't want you to be daunted when you look at the cutting list because there is kind of a long list. We go all the way from the letter A to GG. <laughs> That's a lot of cutting. But I promise it's going to be worth it, you guys, because once you have it all organized and laid out, it's just going to slip together like a dream. So at least that's the goal. <laughs> okay, let's see who's here. I saw Allison was here. Uh, Melissa's here. Dolores. I will also tell you guys that um, I can't see as good. <laughs> That's normal. So Rachel's here. She says her for so long and her kit got there on Friday. Don't be nervous, Rachel. This is a dive in exciting moment. <laughs> I'm really happy for you. That's so fun. Yes, Sandra. I'm glad I made the trip too. It was so fun. It was really great. I've never been to that Road to California show before. Highly recommend it. I didn't do any classes or anything like that. I just did the show floor and um, it was really fun to see all the new things coming out and to find some really cool shops and um, meet some new friends. So that was really good and see some old friends. So it was really, it was a fun week. So oh, Dolores, I've missed you too. Let's see, Dawn is here, um, Mona's here, J.A., I don't know your name, but we'll just call you J.A. <laughs> or just J. Becky's here, hi Becky. Carrie's here. Yay, I'm so excited you're excited, Carrie. Me too. Um, Mona said her fabric came today. Woohoo! Wendy's here. Helen's here. So glad you're here too. Oh, Helen says she's been in Bev's separation anxiety. That's the sweetest, Helen. Oh, <laughs> Sandra sits her first so long. Yay, Sandra, we've got this. Um, sorry, I'm going to try not to sniff too much. <laughs> Rachel says, okay, so Rachel said it was her first so long. Um, Ruth says she's excited. Yay, Ruth. And you guys are all very sweet about my feel better. 
I hope that I, I hope it's not too much of a, a distraction, me having a cold. I just wanted to sew with you guys, so we're powering through. <laughs> Nancy's excited about the block and the pattern. Yay! And Donna says her first sew along and her kit is supposed to be delivered today. Ooh, that's good, Donna. And even if you guys are just tuning in and you're finding about this for the first time this week, um, it's January 22nd, um, just know that these videos will stay on my YouTube channel for you to access whenever you like. I know life happens, so it's not always feasible for everybody to keep up with a sew along, um, especially when you have jobs and kids and all the things. So don't worry, these videos are gonna be here. Um, we wanna see your progress, even if it's a year from now. We would love to cheer you on, and um, uh, a lot of people share photos in my Facebook group. It's linked in today's video, so. Um, definitely don't be daunted. I am out of afternoon tea, tea party kits, but there are lots of shops that still have them. Um, there's no more Riley Blake though, so I can't order any more and neither can any more shops. So if you go, if you decide you want a kit, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, if you decide you want a kit, hit that shops link on my um, description of today's video. It says afternoon tea shops and um, there will be shops there that still have kits. So definitely check those out and buy those all up. <laughs> oh, let's see. And, and let's see, let's see. She's sewing along with me. An I don't know how to say your name. Anders for you, is that right? Um, I'm so glad you're here live too. She's sewing along with me. And she got um, the quilt kit and the fabrics are amazing. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's Martha. Yay, Martha, I'm so glad. Okay, so in our previous sew alongs, so what we've done is we have, um, I have shared other sew along progress and things like that at the beginning and then done the sewing for the blocks. And this time we are flipping that because if you're just here to see the blocks, I want to make sure that you have the time to sew along. And also, um, I just wanted to change things up a little bit. So we're gonna dive right into our sewing and then if you want to hang around with me, I would love it. We are going to, I'm going to show you some blocks of current sew alongs and talk about other things that I'm doing on my website in addition to our sew along. So that's what we're doing. So we're just going to dive right in. So our block is the teapot block. In the pattern, I have broken down the quilt into different styles of blocks. And the great thing about the teapot block is once we've mastered this, we're gonna be able to do everything else. And it's bigger, so we're going to learn how to make the handle. It's the exact same method that we'll use on the teacups, just smaller pieces. So think of this almost like a practice block, but also it's gonna be the block with the most pieces too. So the teacup blocks are a lot simpler. They're all constructed the same way. They're just different sizes. So, <clears throat> My big recommendation, excuse me, one sec. Oh, Bambi, it was nice to meet you at Road 2. Sorry, if you all are just tuning in, I am sick. So, <laughs> <coughs> um, okay, so my biggest tips for you is to make this as easy as possible is to be organized. Um, there are, like I said at the beginning of the video, there are pieces, I have labeled the pieces to be cut. A, I've used letters to keep it as easy to organize as possible. And we are going A through GG with this block. That feels like a lot of pieces. And when you're cutting, you're going to think, wow, this is a lot of pieces. So my recommendation for you to do is to be as organized as possible. I highly recommend picking up some sort of alphabet. Um, can you guys see those? These are alphabeties. There, I'll turn it a little bit. So these are just a little plastic alphabet labeling. Um, they're, they're not sticky or anything. So you'll cut your pieces and you'll set them on there. And it's just a way to keep track of what pieces are what so that once you cut them all up, you don't have to get them to your sewing machine and be like, okay, what size was the T piece again? So it'll all be labeled for you. There are um, several different types out there on the market. I have these linked for you to Fat Quarter Shop. I also have the the double letter package. Um, again, this is totally optional. You can just grab a post-it note or a piece of paper and letter them all. Or if you have some little pins that have kind of a bigger head on them, 
you know, grab a Sharpie and write on there. But just keep in mind that if you've kept them labeled, it'll be a whole lot easier after cutting to keep track of what piece you're using where, because some of these pieces are fairly close in size to other pieces. You don't wanna grab the wrong thing and be like, oh, why does my handle not fit? <laughs> because that'll probably be the reason why. Either it was cut, you know, and it's easy to, um, you know, miss, make a mistake when you're cutting, but if you grab the wrong piece, it's also um, easy to make a mistake when you're sewing. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm really trying to say like, as if, if you're organized with this, it's going to make things a whole lot easier. The other thing that I do is I grab a pencil and as I'm cutting, I'll just make a little hash next to it. You can erase them later, um, but that way you know you've cut that piece out so you're not double cutting or wasting fabric. Um, I have this labeled and lettered according to what, um, to try and make it as easy when sewing as possible. There are several different strip sizes and things like that. Don't worry too much about having not enough fabric. What I usually do when I'm cutting out something like this is I'll look and see, okay, I need some pieces that are two and a half, one and a half, one and three quarters. And so from my background fabric, I'll cut a two and a half inch strip by the width of the fabric. So a two and a half inch by width of fabric. Then I'll cut those pieces and label them. And if I haven't used all of my two and a half inch strip, I'll set it aside and use it later when I'm cutting out something for one of the teacups or something like that. Odds are you're still probably going to have plenty of fabric left over, but it's always good to not go crazy and waste in case you make a mistake cutting. So that's how I usually do it. So I would cut like a two and a half inch strip, a one and a half, a one and three quarters, kind of cut those pieces out, see if you need another strip, that sort of thing. That's how I do it. Um, feel free to do it any way you would like. <laughs> Um, Pamela says she doesn't have the double letters, so she used the numbers for her double letter pieces. Perfect, Pamela. Um, anything you do like that to keep track of what piece is what is going to make this a whole lot easier. The other thing um, I like to do is keep my pieces on a backing board. This is the Lori Holt design board. Um, that way I can cut them, put them on here, and then take them to my sewing machine pretty easily. I have some design boards at uh, Fat Quarter Shop linked to you. I don't know, um, linked in the video description. I'm not entirely sure if they have these bigger boards. They might only have the small ones in stock. <coughs> but you can also easily make your own. I don't know if you've ever seen in like Walmart or any craft store, they have in the cake section, they have like um, the boards, the cardboards that cakes go on. Um, I use those all the time for other things. Um, so um, you could just grab one of those. The package usually has three or four pieces in it. Grab a scrap of batting and glue it on. You can use a spray based or even just any kind of glue. Hot glue would work. Um, and glue it on. And then if you want to put the binding around it, you can. But you can also just use it as is. Um, it's an easy way to get a large backing board for you know, hardly any money because those uh, cake decorating cake boards don't cost hardly anything at all. So just something to think about and an alternative, but it does make easy for transferring. If your cutting mat and your sewing machine aren't in the exact same place, then you can cut, label, put them all on your board, and then go to your machine without having to relabel or, you know, drop your labels or anything like that. So those two tips will hopefully help. I also have um, in my first blog post, um, and I have it linked in today's blog post as well, so those are in the description, is the cutting information so that you know what fabrics, if you wanna make your afternoon tea kit exactly like it's shown here, so it shows you what fabrics to use where. Again, this is 100% your quilt, of course. So go crazy if you want. You don't have to use the same fabrics I did. Just know that you might, you know, if you use all the blue florals as your teapots, one, you probably won't have enough. But two, you'll, you'll need to sub out a different fabric somewhere else if you use a different fabric, if that makes sense. So you'll just have to play with your prints a little bit. But there's plenty of fabric to make this quilt in the Fat Quarter bundle along with this, you know, other than the sashing and all that kind of stuff. So... Those are some big tips as far as getting in there. <laughs> okay, so I just wanna make sure I'm not missing any questions. Um, Dawn says she loves her alphabetes. She's so glad she has them, yay. 
Um, okay, good. <laughs> Pamela says, good tip. Mark what is done. Awesome. Let's see. Ruth said she bought letter and number beads and used pins with a large bead on top. She secured with a plastic earring back. She needs multiple letters and numbers for multiple projects. That's a great idea, Ruth. I love it. Um, Rachel, I like, uh, she asked what size board you, you recommend. I like the bigger boards just because then you can put your pieces on them. This is a 14 by 14. Um, I think it's the biggest one I have, but even the little ones are helpful, but not as much if you're building a block, you know, that kind of thing. So I would say bigger is better. <laughs> um, Melissa writes the letter on scrap pieces of fabric with a Crayola marker and um, keeps it on all the design boards. Very smart, Melissa. Okay. Oh, Dollar Tree is a good tip for the um, the boards. You can get the you can get a foam board at Dollar Tree and do the exact same thing, and then you have, um, you know, super reasonable pricing. So let's start sewing. Are you guys ready to start sewing? What you're going to love about this block is we're basically going to use just a couple methods. One is we're going to do a stitch and flip block, or um, they're sometimes called snowballs. There's several different names, but it's basically where you're sewing on a marked line, you trim a quarter of an inch away, and then you press. Um, most picture blocks use something similar, you know, use a lot of stitch and flip blocks. So um, we're going to do that method all over this block. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this first time, but then I've prepped some of the others for you. So let's start with our first instruction. So I'm going to follow along with the instructions on the booklet so that you can follow along too. So we're going to start with the B print piece, which is actually the top lid of our cute little um, teapot. What are we making? Y'all, my brain is full of cold medicine. <laughs> Please bear with me today. So if you have a little laser on your sewing machine, you do not have to draw these lines, but we don't always have a laser handy. So I'm going to show you guys how to draw these lines on. We're just drawing a diagonal line on our blocks. I'm going to use the non air erase, the water erase, so it doesn't go away. And I've put my block, my little piece down. You can't see it because of my face. There we go. Here's our little um, piece. This is the L piece and this is the B piece. Okay, so we're going to put our little ruler down and we're going to draw a diagonal lane. Well, that's very bold. A diagonal lane on both of these background pieces. Now you'll notice that the L background piece does not, is not the same width as, well, okay, the lid rolled under the iron. <laughs> that would have been very stinky. <laughs> um, so you'll see when we place these in place that it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the print piece. That is the way it is designed. The other thing you'll notice as we're going through is that you're going to make two teapot blocks that face and I don't know if you would say this face is the right or the left. I would say this face is left because the handle's going left. So as you go, you're going to pay attention to where your pieces are sewn so that you can make two that go this way and two that have the handle coming out this way. So if you'll notice on the quilt behind me, one sec. If you'll notice on the quilt behind me that every other shelf, the handle and spout change direction. So it goes to the left, the right, the left, the right. And it's all assembled the same way, but you're going to pay attention to the instructions as far as which side you sew the you know pieces together to. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But for the, for the um, lid, it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're just sewing it together. So what I'm gonna do is take this over to the machine and I'm gonna sew on those two marked lines. We can do them both at once because they don't overlap in any way. So let's go to the machine. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Bye, Leslie. <laughs> Okay, so here we are at the machine, and I'm going to sew for these blocks right on the marked line. So I'm going to start over here.
and I'm going to still have my laser on because I like to keep it on. Um, helps me line up my blocks. If you have a laser on your machine, you don't need to draw those lines. You can just come right to your machine and dive into sewing. I will admit it out for you in the pattern. So it's more just keeping track and following the illustrations, okay? So I've sewn on both those marked lines and now I'm gonna go back to the cutting mat and trim off both of those corners. Okay, so here we are. I've sewn on those marked lines and now we're going to trim. And I'm going to use my little cutting uh, mat here. I have a small mat that I picked up at Fat Quarter Shop. I love to have these for trimming blocks. They're great for half square triangles and stitch and flip blocks because you can trim your blocks on these and you don't have to worry about um, using, you know, if you're standing in front of your mat and you're doing a lot of trimming, you're going to stand in front of the place, the same place all the time. So your mat is going to get worn in one place. But if you have these little small curvy mats, they spin, they're really handy. Um, they're great for trimming and they cost a whole lot less than a mat. So you can, you know, get them, you know, redo them. But I've had this one for, gosh, a couple years now and, oh, we spun apart. And I don't need to, I don't feel like I need to change it out yet. So I really like these little mats. So what I'm doing is I have... A, um, a line here a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my ruler I'm placing that line on my seam and I'm trimming off that edge so you can see how I've trimmed up the block and now we're going to press and really that's all there is to a stitch and flip block you're stitching it and then you're pressing the piece out so I'm going to give this a little shot with my favorite little light starch and then I'm going to press those two corners out. I gave it a lot of starch. <laughs> so now here's my piece. You can actually see the blue there. I will um, probably go off. You can see the blue line. <laughs> I'll go wipe that off later. Um, but this is the top piece of our teapot. So now what you're going to do is you're going to sew, this is the end piece, it's just a background piece, and this is the M, N and M, <laughs> and you're going to sew them like this if you are making the teapot that goes to the, the spout goes to the left, but if you are making the other two teapots, you will make two that go like that. So very simple changes as far as what you need to do for the left and right teapots it's really just a matter of for the most part sewing your background pieces you know as it shows in the illustration so you're going to want to watch those illustrations okay <laughs> but because we're going to make another left teapot we're going to sew our pieces like that so i'm going to go sew these two seams on and then we'll come back and press Teresa said she's sorry she's late. No worries, Teresa. And she's sorry I'm sick. Well, I'm sure it'll be better soon. By next week, I'll be all back to normal. <laughs> okay. Yes, Rebecca says you can add some pretty color with that little mat. I love it. Um, let's see. Pamela says that smaller pieces seem to need more flatter to lay down well, but it smells so good. Who cares? I agree with you on that, Pamela. I love the smells. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place this right here, and I'm going to sew this piece down, just like I showed you on the other camera, the overhead camera. And I'm going to do the same thing with this larger piece. I'm going to sew it to the other side. And we're going to sew a straight seam there. And we're going to go ahead and sew these sashing pieces on so that when we're ready to build out the rest of our teapot, they'll be um, super easy to sew on. So you can see how that looks. 
um, and it uh, has just the different background pieces on each side. Super easy, right? Okay, let's go press. Uh, J.A. asked what stitch length I use. I sew at a 1.8 uh, millimeter for my piecing. Okay, so here is um, this piece, and now we're going to go ahead and press. Super easy, right? Okay, so we have our cute, this is um, the like base of the lid of the teapot. So our next step is really easy. We're going to build the top little kind of knob of the teapot. And I've gone ahead and sewn that for you. This is the C piece. And for this one, we have the O piece on this side and the P piece on this side. But if you are making the other one, all you have to do with this block, with this strip, is flip it. So it's really easy. None of our fabrics are really directional in this. I'm trying to think. I think I made this, all of our fabrics, non-directional. So you don't need to worry too much about this one. So what you're going to do with these two pieces after you sew these three together is you're going to just set them aside. We're going to sew together the rest of them later. So super easy, right? <laughs> Lillian says she's glad there's only four teapots. There's so many pieces. I know Lillian. I'm sorry. It's worth it, right? <laughs> and I promise after this, these teacups are going to seem like nothing. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the body of the teapot. So for these, I chose the large florals because I really wanted to show off the florals in afternoon tea. Again, if you wanna use some of the smaller ones, um, feel free to do that. Just know that you'll use those large florals in other cup pieces. So easy peasy, right? So this is the same thing that we just did on the teapot lid. You're going to put these K background pieces on each corner and you're going to sew angled just like it shows in the picture. So you can see I've already sewn these down. I don't know if you can see that. It's very light. And um, then we're going to trim these off. So I'm going to line up my dashed line here with my seam and trim. And we're gonna do that for all four of these corners. This is such an easy, the body of the teapot is the easiest part. And we're going to go this way. Uh, let's see. Jay asked if the cutting instructions are width times height. They are actually the smaller number first. Um, that was how I was originally, all my books had to be, so I've gotten into the habit of writing that way. So you will need to pay attention to the piece size in the illustrations to know where, how to sew that piece on, okay? So here is our piece, and we're going to go ahead and now press these corners back on the body of the teapot. So we'll just give it a little shot with some flatter. This is the uh, starch spray that I like. It's a very light, I don't know if you would even count it as a starch. It's just kind of a, a flattening spray and it smells heavenly. If you are sensitive to smells, you can, they have an unscented one. So don't worry about that. It's just nice. It's not a really heavy starch, but it's enough that you can, it helps your pieces lay down a little flatter, hence the name. <laughs> and it also just um, keeps everything super straight and it's just kind of like a semi-starch. <laughs> okay, so here's our piece and at this point we're going to kind of look at our florals and decide how we want our block to look. So do, I, do you guys think it looks prettier with the big floral up towards the top of the teapot or do you think it looks prettier like that? You guys can vote. <laughs> Oh, Dawn said the main floral is so pretty. Oh, thanks. Um, Lillian, I don't do anything with the trim triangle scraps. I know a lot of people do. Um, and if it is a very large triangle scrap, I will save it for like a half square triangle later. 
but um, I am very busy and I don't have a whole lot of time for extra projects. So it feels like then I'm just holding on to fabric that I'm not going to use, if that makes sense. So especially for like pieces that are this small, I don't, um, I don't save those pieces. So you guys want the big flowers up at the top? Or the second one? You're kind of half and half now. We're going to wait. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave that here. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. I hate, I hate that. Okay. So now we're going to start building out the spout of our teapot. The spout is made up of three pieces. They are three pieces of like, you're going to pick like a contrasting fabric. It'll be the same fabric as the handle and the base of the teapot. And then there's an accent strip here. I'll show you. So you'll see here that the spout, the handle and the base are all the same fabric. And then there's an accent strip here and then the lid are the same. So three fabrics in your teapot. So we're going to start working on building out these three pieces um, of our teapot. So I have gone ahead and done this. Let's see, I grabbed the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do with this one, and this is where you need to pay attention to your left teapots and your right teapots, because this is the, um, these three strips of the spout are when you can't flip it upside down and have it reusable as the left side. So you can't make left side and then, oops, I, I messed that up. Um, I'm going to flip it over for the right side. So what um, you'll really need to do is pay attention to those illustrations in the book, okay? But because we are doing a left teapot, then our lines are going to go from top left to bottom right. If you are doing a right teapot, it's going to go from top right to bottom left. So is everybody okay with um, following those illustrations? You're understanding what I'm saying about the different, um, different things, the different directions. So I've drawn my lines. I'm now going to sew on these marked lines and then we're going to trim. So we're doing stitch and flips again, um, but we're just, these two pieces are going to go in the same direction because we're kind of building that spout out, okay? So let's go sew these in place real quick. Oh, Valerie is here from um, Colorado. Hey, oh, you guys like the flower? Okay, most of you like the flower at the top. And Lillian says it's a delightful combination of fabric. And Lillian, that's a very sweet comment. I love it. <laughs> Okay, so for these stitch and flips, I often like to start rather than at a corner. Sometimes your um, machine can kind of eat a corner. I start them like where there's actually going to be a little bit of fabric for the machine to grab onto. So I am going to do this bottom one first and I'm going to sew. I thought it was coming unthreaded there. <laughs> I'm going to sew that one in place first. And then I'm going to flip the piece over and sew the other one. I've not changed the lines, of course. I'm just kind of picking how I put them into the machine so that, that it's the easiest for the machine. Rachel, I'm so glad she said this is so helpful to watch and follow along with the pattern. Yay! Okay, so we've got these two lines sewn. So now we're gonna go trim, and again, we're trimming off the corners. So you never wanna trim in the fabric piece, be careful of that. So we're gonna trim these two corners off, and then we'll have like a, what's that shape? Parallelogram, maybe? I don't know, I was never a math person. Okay, here is our piece we're going to trim. Um, Dolores, I did not fussy cut the big piece of the teapot. I just cut up the fabric and that is what happened. This is what happened with the first one and this is what happened with the second one. Actually, since the first one has the flowers at the bottom, I agree with y'all, let's put the flowers up at the top. So we'll do that one this way. Um, you can, I think, do that if you really want to have certain flowers show up in your 
um, in your pieces. I trying to think. Yeah. So the big florals are only used on the teapots and the blue one is the one that you need to watch out for because you're using two teapots worth. But a back quarter is 18 by 20, 22, depending upon how it's cut. So you can definitely um, have enough room to play with the teapot piece because that piece is eight and a half by nine and a half. Just don't go crazy. Don't cut one out from the middle of your back quarter because then you're going to not have enough, right? So just be smart about how your pieces, um, how you lay out your pieces. Um, but yeah, you should be able to fussy cut so that you can have certain florals for the most part in there. So I have cut those two corners off. Now we're gonna press, we'll move our teapot up out of the way. And we're just gonna press these in place. And we're following these same steps and again, I'm not worrying about this. The, this is the labels print, and there are some directional um, words, like this says Robos Chai, but this one says premium, I can't remember, oh, breakfast tea. So on that labels print, I turned them every which direction, so you don't need to try and worry about that um, when you're cutting your pieces out. But you can, you know, if you have your words going what more than one like, you know, when you're looking at the piece before you sew it on, if it seems like all your words are kind of going one direction, then you can make sure your piece is turned that way. It's just a, you know, if you're, if you notice it while you're sewing. Okay, so now we're going to sew the Z pieces to the top and bottom. And we have to sew these background pieces on here so that it ends up the same width or height as our teapot fabric. Okay. So we're going to go take these over to the machine and sew these on real quick. Oh, okay. So I was right about the parallelogram and now I feel super smart. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Look at me remembering something from the dawn of time in math. <laughs> okay. So now I've got my pieces in place and I'm going to sew them on. Try and keep them as straight as they can be when you sew them on because um, the, especially with a thin piece of fabric, it's, it's easier to get off alignment the smaller the piece, the thinner the piece, if that makes sense. So you want to try and keep this as straight as possible as you're sewing. And because we are sewing these two two other pieces that we want to line up, we want to keep that seam allowance as accurate as possible as well. So here is our cute piece, and now we're gonna go press. This is the first portion of the spout that attaches to the teapot. There'll be two more out here. Okay, here's our piece, we're gonna press. Hang in there with me, you guys. I know it feels like there's a lot to do, but it's really um, it's really just stitch and flips and then these straight seams to kind of build out the block. So if you haven't ever done picture blocks before, this is pretty typical. And um, so it's, and it's worth it because we have these cute teapots. I feel like I'm reassuring you the whole way through. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, Sandra, I'm doing a quarter inch. Um, and... I, if you're doing a scant or a quarter inch, it shouldn't matter a whole lot either way, um, as long as you do the same thing all the way through. Okay, one second, I gotta take a drink. Okay, so there are two more pieces. We're gonna turn the page here. Two more pieces that are part of the T-spout, and this is again where you're going to want to pay attention to what pieces you're using because this piece is a little bit wider than the one that goes next to it. And then there is <coughs> the little spout that goes on the end. This is also a stitch and flip. It's just, you're basically creating a half square triangle, but it's formed the same way. Um, you're just going to be going this way. So now 
you can see that you can't really turn your pieces to the right spouts, right? So when you're gonna sew that right spout, you're gonna put your background pieces on going from, instead of top left to bottom right, you're gonna go top right to bottom left so that the spout builds out towards the right, okay? <laughs> Oh, Pamela, you're very sweet. Um, okay, I'm so glad that you guys are feeling like this is really helpful, yay. So this is the part where you're going to want to make sure that your pieces are going to line up because you want this spout, particularly this one and this one, so these two right here, you want them to be in line. Now, I will tell you, some people get really stressed about lining things up and making sure Okay, yes, we want to try as best we can to line things up. But if you look at the one behind me up here on the wall, if there was a little bit off in that spout, you wouldn't be able to see it, right, from here. So I don't want you to stress too much about that. Yes, you want to try and get them lined up, but don't make yourself crazy, okay, because this is a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun, right? It's supposed to be fun. So what you're going to do is you're going to sew these three pieces together to form the spout. And these two pieces are going to line up. Um, once we put them together, it doesn't look like that because the seam allowance is in there. But this, the little spout piece is supposed to be above. So it's going to make the line here. It's going to make the line of the spout. I'll show you on the block rather than my hands, for heaven's sake. So you want that line of the spout to line up right here. You don't have to worry about it down here because it's obviously very different. But the spout is going to be a little bit above. So it's just that lip of a spout, right? So it's above. It's meant to be that way. So I'm just trying to help you figure out what you need to worry about and what you don't. <laughs> so let's take this to the machine and we're going to sew these three pieces together. Sandra, don't stress about seam ripping. Like, this is why we just check it and make sure that it's going to work. So what I usually do is I put the two pieces together and then I kind of, so I can tell where that quarter of an inch seam allowance should be because these two seams cross. So I have um, a seam going up here from my stitch and flip and I have a seam going right here from this background piece. So where I ideally want these two blocks to meet is right where those two seams intersect. That is what's going to give us the most straight um, angle. So I'm gonna put my thumb there where my nail is and I'm just going to open that up and go, oh, okay, so that's gonna be a little bit off. So I'm gonna move it down just a little bit and I'm gonna try again and see okay still needs to come down just the tiniest bit I'm not worrying too much about this up here because it's really just a fraction off so then I'm going to open that back up and okay that looks pretty good so I am going to without letting go of where my where my thing is I'm going to go ahead and put a pin there and then I'm going to sew the rest of this together So again, this is really the only one that you need to worry about that on. And then as you're sewing, you'll see, okay, my seam allowance is hitting exactly where I wanted it to. And I have a little bit of extra background fabric down here at the bottom because I shimmied my piece down a little bit. That's fine. I'm not worrying about that. <laughs> as you will be able to tell if you are new to sewing with me, I don't get too fussed about this kind of thing. If it's not exactly 100% perfect, it's still going to work out. <laughs> uh, Donna, yes, I use the fat quarters for the T, all the print pieces. So now you can see when we open that up that we have a very pretty line here. So now we're going to fold this one over and we're going to line it up with the remaining piece and we're going to sew that. So three straight seams is all you have to worry about. And we're not matching anything up on this one, so we don't have to stress. I'm just making sure it's straight. Okay, 
And I'm not like a Jenny Doan super lightning fast sewer. She's so, so fast. But I find that I'm a little bit more accurate for me personally. I'm not saying she's not accurate. Um, I'm saying I'm a little bit more accurate if I don't sew like um, an insane person. <laughs> Uh, Melissa says, if your seam lines aren't perfect, then just wash it a bunch of times. It gets all crinkly and you can never tell. <laughs> Crinkle is the snuggliest. A hundred percent, Melissa. Okay, so you can see here now our spout um, has that little lip like we were wanting. And so what we're going to do is go over and press all of our seams to the side. Okay, so here's our cute spout. And now we're gonna press, and we are pressing away from the spout. Um, if you feel like your pieces are a little bit bulky, then go ahead and press those seams open. That's okay, you can do that. I won't say anything. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. Um, you can just go ahead and press however it feels, but I have you pressing away from the spout. So I'm gonna press this a little bit more I'm going to give it a shot of flatter because it's feeling a little bulky, especially where those background and seams line up. So I'm just giving it a good press, and then I'm going to kind of leave it here, and I'm going to set my clapper on top of it. So that'll kind of get it um, a little bit flatter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pamela says that Jenny Doan says finished is better than perfect. Amen. <laughs> okay, so now we have our, our, um, our cute spout, and we're going to sew that to our teapot. And what we're going to try and line up here is we're lining up the bottom of the teapot with the bottom of the spout. Okay, so we're going to take that over and sew. Did I skip something? I did. Y'all, we're not going to do that yet. I don't know. Okay, I'm on cold medicine. I'll just tell you now. Again, <laughs> we um, we didn't do the handle. Let's do the handle, okay? So for the handle, we have, this is our G piece, and we have sewn a U piece to the top and bottom, and like it shows in illustrations, you're going to sew the lines opposite each other. So this one starts at the top right, goes to the bottom left. This one starts at the top right. Wait. Top left goes to bottom right, top right goes to bottom left. So we're going to trim that up. Sorry about that, you guys. I got super excited about our handles and I sewed them together. Our, not handles, our spout, and I sewed them together without doing our handle. Okay. So I've trimmed off, just like we did with our other blocks. I've made that stitch and flip. And now we're going to go press these together. Press these out. think we have some cute little elements showing up here in our tea labels oh yeah there's a little teapot cute huh okay so this is the back part of the handle so then you're going to sew a piece together with the let's see f print pieces and the v background piece so it's just an f piece on each end and then we are going to sew this back part of the handle to the sides, so the top and bottom. So now you can see how the handle goes together, and that's what we're going to do with the teacups for every remaining block. All of them have handles, um, and they're just going to be the, assembled the same way, but smaller pieces because, of course, the handles on the cups are quite a bit smaller. So we're going to take this over to the machine, and we are going to sew down this seam right here to sew the handle to the top and bottom. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. I'm jostling you. Sorry. I'm bumping you. <laughs> Carrie says she keeps singing I'm a little teapot over and over in her head. Yay! <laughs> okay, so we're going to sew this together down this one seam. 
nice and straight and easy. So we have several steps here, but you can see that they, you know, if you're just following the step by step, they go together pretty fast. And we only have to make four of these. So you can absolutely do some, um, do some line work here, like sew all your handles together, then sew all, you know, sew your spouts all together, then your handles all together, that sort of thing. So that you're doing, you're not having to make a whole teapot, then go on to the next teapot. So definitely um, kind of work in batches here. So this is the um, handle. And now we're gonna go press that. And then we're gonna sew a background piece to the top and bottom so that it makes it the right height. Okay, so let's press that. And all the pressing instructions are in the booklet so that it makes it a little bit easier for you so you don't have to kind of fight and know which way. But the other thing is, if you're feeling like your fabric is fighting with you, then press it however you would like. It's certainly not going to not go together because you pressed it differently than me. <laughs> okay, so now we have the W and X pieces, and this is one of those pieces that you will see, you're gonna to have to turn that X piece because it is wider. I mean, it's, it's a rectangle, right? So, but you need to put the wide side to the bottom of the handle so that it fits. So W on top, X on the bottom. And if you are making the opposite two, tea, two teapots, you're gonna have your handle look like this because that handle will go on the left side of the teapot, okay? So just keep those illustrations handy. And so we're gonna go sew these two together. Pamela says you could make one teapot and turn it into a matching pillow. Pamela, I love that idea, and you should, will definitely have enough fabric left over to do that, especially if you make your teapot out of the blush or the um, sand dollar background. Oh, it'd be so cute. Okay, so I'm sewing those two background pieces on, and I'm um, lining them up here so that they're nice and straight. Sorry, sorry y'all. And I just wanna double check. Okay, so we hit that portion there so that the top of our handle looks good. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. And so we're just sewing this on so that our handle is the right height to match up with the teapot block. Teresa says she loves the um, pressing directions. It makes life easier. I'm so glad. So here we go. This is our cute little handle. Now it looks kind of fat on this side because um, you know that incorporates the seam allowance. So once we sew the sashing on, um, it'll take up a little bit of that handle and it'll be a little bit more in the right perspective. Um, so hard to tell sometimes when you're like, well, why is that so fat? Well, it's just easy to forget that that includes the seam allowance there. So let's go press that. Okay, so here is this, and we're going to press these up, and then I'm going to lay out for you how it's assembled, but I'm not gonna sew the whole thing together because it would, I mean, we're already uh, almost an hour and I don't want to take up too much of your time. And we still have to do our giveaways. <laughs> so I'm better going to show you how it goes together, okay? So we're going to take those spot spouts. Let me shimmy some things around here for you. So we're going to take that spout and we're going to sew that to the um, left or right, depending upon which way teapot you're making, we're gonna sew it to the side. And once we sew that, then we're going to sew the lid and the little handle to the top, okay? 
And you will have a little bit of overhang with that lid. There is a little bit of a lip, just like with a teapot. You know, it doesn't sit necessarily flush with the top. It kind of overlaps the top, the teapot a little bit. So there is a little bit of an overlap there. Don't worry about trying to get this to match that. It's not supposed to, okay? Then you can go ahead and sew your handle on and your handle is going to line up with this side of your teapot. It doesn't look like it because the seam allowances are in there. So once you sew all those pieces in place, then you're going to sew the base in place. And this is the accent piece. It's down here. Again, once we sew this in, this will line up with the base of this. And then for the base, we've made a stitch and flip section and sewn background to the sides of it. And that will line up with the base of that teapot. So these all end up the same width because, and it doesn't look like it, but the seam allowances um, allow that to happen. So that's all there is to assembling the rest of that teapot. The trickiest thing about it for you is going to be here so you can see it all together. So you can see how they all line up the same width, the, um, the accent, the base, and then how the handle lines up with the teapot, and then how this lines up with the teapot on the bottom. Again, oh, and you can see how this overlaps, so it doesn't line up. <laughs> So again, don't stress too much about this. If it's off a little bit, I promise no one is going to see that but you. If they point it out, then they don't get to snuggle under your teapot quilt anymore. <laughs> so that is our um, tea party teapot quilt. And um, I'm going to talk for just a second, but then we'll do giveaway. So I'll go back to this camera in a second. So the nice thing is once you guys do this, the hardest part is done. The teapot the teacup blocks are all sewn the same way as each other. Obviously, they're not exactly like the teapot. There's a lot less pieces. They're just different size teacups. So some are wider, some are taller, that sort of thing. So we're going to talk about how to sew those up next week, and we're going to make our various little stacks and things like that. But you can really have fun with these. Um, feel free to get creative. Change up your prints if you want to. You do not have to make it exactly like mine. Um, on the teacups, I have made mine so the cup is one print and then the handle and saucer are the same print. But you don't have to do that. This is totally your jam. So feel free to get creative with that. So, um, okay, yay, I'm so glad you like the teapot. I want to see your teapots. You guys, um, share your photos in my Facebook group or on Instagram, tag me. I would love to see them. I would love to reshare your photos on Instagram. So definitely um, throw some photos up of what you're doing. Don't feel self-conscious. We are all extremely fun and friendly and nobody's going to judge your teapots. If they do, I'll boot them. <laughs> so every week, sorry. <coughs> my cold is about done with talking. Um, every week we, got, we have a giveaway and it's just my way of saying thank you guys. Um, I know there's a bajillion sew-alongs out there and it's so... I appreciate, um, I really appreciate you guys sewing along with me and being a part of our little Flamingo Toast Stitch and Share Club and just all the fun that we have together. So um, I have a little giveaway every week. Uh, last week was our kickoff week, so it was a, um, a nice big giveaway. We had a lot of fun. So for our prize last week, let's switch cameras. I think the sun went behind a cloud because it's dark all of a sudden in here. So for our prize last week, these are the people um, who watched last week's video. I have a fat quarter bundle of afternoon tea so you can make up something else besides tea party if you want. I have a fat quarter bundle of Hush Hush 3 which is Riley Blake Designs low volume collection. They put these out about once a year and they are gorgeous. There are 21 different prints in here but they're all low volume all designed by different Riley Blake designs designers. <laughs> so these are really fun. And then I also have a panel of afternoon tea. I think I have a few panels left in the shop. If not, um, I have more on order, but you can definitely visit the shops on that list um, and check out the um, panel. Um, if you watched last week's video, 
I shared a lot of the panel projects. So that is, we have a tea cozy, we have a tea wallet, coasters, all kinds of fun things. And our winner from last week is Laura Hickman. Yay, Laura. I don't know if Laura's watching today, but Laura commented last week. So the giveaways are super easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment and that is your entry. And I draw the winners right before the following Monday's video. So that's last week's Laura. If you're watching, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com and I will get your prize out to you this week. And for this week, I have to get it. <laughs> we have another fun little bundle of things. So this is South Hill from Fran Gulick. She's another Riley Blake designer. If you guys weren't aware, I am a Riley Blake designer. So we definitely are Riley Blake um, people around here <laughs> always. So South Hill came out last year. It's a gorgeous collection, you guys. It has pinks and navies. There are just really pretty florals, little mushrooms, some squirrels. It is a darling collection, you guys. So this is a 10-inch stacker, which is the same as a layer cake. So you can make lots of projects with that. I also have for you um, the my brand new Sweet Spring Bunny Runner and Pillow Pattern. So this is um, a brand new pattern. It's on my website. You can check it out. Um, and it is a very cute little um, bunny runner. If you guys have seen my Sweet Spring Row Quilt, this is extremely similar and would look very cute with it. <laughs> so they're just little bunnies and carrots and a cute little like cross hatched um, border and then a matching pillow pattern. Perfect for Easter, right? And this is a great time to start. So you can pick up one of those in the store if you're wanting to. Um, you guys know I'm a fan of small rulers. These are perfect for trimming and all kinds of stuff. So I have a cute cuts ruler for you. This is Lori Holt's two and a half, wait, Two and a half by four and a half inch ruler. So cute and it's pink. <laughs> and then I also have a set for you of my brand new afternoon tea. So this is the tea, Roses Tea Set Needle Minder and Charm. And these are in the shop as well. So this is a really cute little needle minder that will hold your needle when you're not stitching and the matching charm. So you can put it on your bag or your project bags or your purse or whatever you'd like. <laughs> so this is this week's prize. Leave a comment on today's video if you would like to be entered and I will draw the winner next week. So that's very fun. Okay, just to highlight a couple other things. <clears throat> One sec. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. I am sewing along with the RBD block challenge. I do this every year. And it is Riley Blake's free mystery quilt along. It starts in January. And um, we've had two weeks so far. So, and I'm making my quilt this year in afternoon tea. Sorry. And um, so this is the first block. This is Lori Holt's block. It's called Vintage Delight. And last week was my turn. This is called Sparkle and Shine. Wait. Yes, Sparkle and Shine. This is the block. I'm sorry, I can't always remember what I've named these things. <laughs> but this is my block from last week. And we have a new block releasing tomorrow. The So Long is free. All the blocks are 10 and a half inch blocks unfinished. So if there's a block you don't like, you can go into the 2023 or 2022 RBD block challenge and sub it out. Um, or you could use it for whatever project you would like. You know, maybe you pick your three favorite blocks and um, and make a runner or something like that. So this is my block. Another block will come out tomorrow. I really love how it turned out. So check my website for that tomorrow. Um, all my website links are in the video description in case you are new to me. And also I would really love it if you hit that like button and subscribed so you don't miss any of our videos. So that's the RBD block challenge. The Riley Blake is also hosting a free so long to highlight Hush Hush 3, which is that fat quarter bundle I showed you guys. And they have a really beautiful quilt called the Shine Together Quilt. And in that quilt, there are a whole bunch of star blocks that have pieced centers. Well, the RBD designers are offering alternative six inch blocks for some of the centers. So I'm going to make up some of those. And that's on Fridays. So this is my block that I designed. It's called Diamond Bright. 
and it uses my Hush Hush 3 print, which is that really cute little pink stripe. These are my Dainty Daisy basic fabrics, and I'm going to sew it up in there. And then this last Friday was Christopher Thompson's block called, um, what is it called? Something House. I don't know. You guys will have to look at it on my website. <laughs> my brain is done. <laughs> But this is his block. This is a cute little six inch block. This is one of my new prints. It's called Stargazer. And then this is um, Songbird. It's a new print as well. And I used Christopher's Hush Hush 3, which is this really cute little popsicle print. So I used his as the background. So I'm just going to sew along with that on Fridays. And um, so there will be a uh, six inch blocks released every Friday and you guys can sew along. You can download that pattern for free. It's not a mystery quilt. And um, I have that linked in today's video description as well. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in, um, sewing up the teapot blocks. I can't wait to see your versions. Thank you for bearing with my, um, <laughs> my cold. Um, I really apologize about that, but I, I'm glad that we powered through and got those teapot blocks made. I will see you next week on our videos on YouTube for the first round of teacups. We are gonna start making the teacup A's. I know, fancy names, right? Teacup A blocks. There will be five of those and two of them we're gonna stack. So they're very cute. They're the like cappuccino cups. They're like the long wide cups. So it'll be really fun. Um, all right, you guys, I have, we all, Hope you have a great week and I will see you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in everybody. Bye bye.